Sometimes you can find some of the best talents in world football in the most obscure places. Places that you wouldn't really go for a holiday or places that you wouldn't go to voluntarily. And these are the places where you can find gem players. I'm going to give a specific example for this particular episode of Scouting Report because it's relevant to the player I will discuss. Alexis Sanchez is a Chilean international who was not from the country's capital, Santiago. He grew up in Tocopilla, which is a place that isn't really on any map. And it wasn't around 20 years ago. But since Sanchez has become the player that he is and he's gained the recognition that he's deserved, everyone now knows this place as the birthplace of Alexis Sanchez. Why have I specifically mentioned Sanchez? Well, because the player in this episode is Chilean as well. Marcelo Allende is his name, and he's one of Chile's biggest footballing prospects. He's 23 years old, he's an attacking midfielder, and he plays in Uruguay for Montevideo City Torque, a club that is nearly 15 years old and is owned by City Football Group. It shares ties with Manchester City, New York City and Melbourne City as well. And there's a link between the Premier League and this club as a result of this. Um, Uruguay is not a place that many people go to on holiday. I don't know if there are any direct flights from the United States to Uruguay. And that's maybe one reason why. But it has produced good footballers such as Luis Suarez and Edison Cavani. Allende has been playing... Uh, his football in Uruguay now for two years. He previously played in Mexico and his homeland of Chile. He was on the radar of Colo Colo and Universidad de Chile as a teenager. Those two teams are two of the biggest in Chilean football. He captained his country at the 2015 Under-17 World Cup in which Chile was the host nation and he even had a trial at Arsenal when he was 17 years old. Reports suggested that he was given a contract by Arsenal, although I'm not sure he has put pen to paper on that because he's currently not with, well, the club right now. What can I tell you about this guy's style of play? Having watched a few videos of him and reading a few media reports, he was dubbed the next Alexis Sanchez. And because of this, it kind of got me a bit interested, I have to say. Because... If you're being dubbed the next Alexis Sanchez, that's a lot of pressure, if you think about it. That's putting a lot of pressure on the guy to um, perform. But I can see some similarities and one contrast, which I'll talk about in a moment. Um, Like Alexis Sanchez, Allende plays a very dynamic game. He uses leadership and technique to aid his midfield. Sanchez was a leader in the strike force at whatever club he was at, whether it be Barcelona, Arsenal, or Inter Milan, Sanchez was always a big leader and a big presence in any attack. Allende likes to help his teammates as much as he can. And he's very dictatorial in his ways. He likes to command the play, how the ball will be played, and who will go where. The tempo and his work tends to be set around the number 10 role, where he is often deployed. The 10 roll for him allows him to go straight down the middle and he tends to shoot straight down the middle as well. Um, I don't think that he's particularly strong at cutting in and out of players, but he plays a very focused, direct and strong mental game. One comparison that I have with Alexis Sanchez is that they both are very strongly involved in games, like I say. However, one contrast is that Allende plays a lot deeper than Sanchez. It's not really common for an attacking midfielder to play deep. I know that's been the case with Manuel Lanzini over the course of this season at West Ham, but Allende doesn't tend to really be placed in a deep role. That does have its advantages, though, for him. Because he's able to get the ball before he even calls for it. 
and then plans to move it more because he's going further back. Um, that said, Allende still has all the talents of a forward-minded player. He's already dubbed the future in Chilean football, part of the future team. Chile's had a bit of a rough ride. It hasn't qualified for the World Cup this year, and there are a lot of fans who are undoubtedly annoyed by that. But there are some bright sparks coming up in the team. Ben Brereton Diaz, the Blackburn forward, has made a breakthrough into the country of his mother's birth, i.e. Chile. And he's been able to play in front of thousands of South American football fans. Allende has been calling to get into the senior Chile team. And he's made his national debut already, having played in a 1-0 win over El Salvador in December 2021. So his debut for the national team is just the start. I think it's going to take a transfer to a bigger and more well-known club for Allende to really make a statement and to really break the ice as far as his career is concerned. That's why players of these countries move abroad, so that they can get one, more publicity, two, more game time, and three, to challenge themselves at a higher level. Allende has already got leadership qualities at his age and is able to um, be a crucial cornerstone figure in a midfield unit. Those are traits that we all need at West Ham. And we love a diamond in the rough player. Look at Thomas Suchet. Did anyone know him before he signed? No, we didn't. We didn't really know who he was. I didn't know that name. I had to look him up. So I looked at Marcelo Allende when I was doing my research into South American players, saw a couple of videos of him, and I was very impressed. He could have signed that contract to Arsenal, but as far as I'm concerned, I'm glad he didn't. Sign it for West Ham instead, my friend.